Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's Geekonomics end of year edition. Oh, Professor Kazaska, thanks oh, for joining us. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Hey. Do you just have that pipe just so you could do that. You don't even have anything in it. You just like playing like a bubble pipe or anything. It's a bubble pipe. Oh, there you go. I don't have bubbles though. Uh, Brian and I are both on vacation this week, <laughs> hence why Brian's in his robe. Yeah. Dressed for the occasion. Always. Uh, I am in my Doctor Who t-shirt in preparation for Revelation of the Dialects, New Year's Day. Oh! Very excited. Very excited for Doctor Who to return. Yes, Doctor Who. You know, it is weird not having Doctor Who on Christmas, though. Yeah. I still am not used to it. I'm still not yeah. used to it. Yeah. Call me an old fuddy-duddy. With a pipe in your mouth. <laughs> the, back in my day, Doctor Who was day, on we Christmas. Had Doctor Who on Christmas Day. Ah! What is this? Oh, in, these crazy kids and they're changing things. Back in my day, we went through a pandemic. <laughs> Name the rotavirus. <laughs> we stayed in our uh, house for a whole year. We stayed in our house for almost two whole years. I didn't have to see anybody. <laughs> it was amazing. That's um, the best Christmas ever. I never saw my family. I, I just stayed home. <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. Merry Christmas to everyone. <laughs> all right all right i'll put the pipe down Ugh. um anyway yeah very cool uh, today we're going to be doing our each kind of our top 10 favorite entertainment things of the year yes. which is going to be awesome top five each not 10 each just so people don't yeah 10 like total. oh man i'm not sitting through all that um uh, and mark what how was your christmas did you do anything we had a nice exciting? christmas it was very light we just did uh christmas eve at uh, Claire's sister's house with just her family and her stepdad and our and us. And then Christmas Day at his house, same people. So it was everyone was everyone's been tested and checked out and everything. So we all knew we were all good to go. So yeah, uh, yeah. So we just did that. It's the first Christmas without Claire's mom. So it was kind of a a somber Christmas. Everyone kind of, and also our first Christmas without Bart. Yeah. So. It was kind of strange. Uh, we kept it kind of low key. Didn't really go crazy. We everyone decided we were not going to do crazy gifts or anything. Just kept everything very, very quiet. But it was nice. It was relaxing. Didn't really do. Didn't have to stress out too much. Just yeah. ate some good food and just kind of just like enjoyed the company of like people instead of you know stressing yeah. out about everything and worrying about everything. Right. And you didn't see your family though, right? No, I did not. I haven't seen my family now. I haven't seen my family in person since well, June, I think. Wow. Wow. Um, that's crazy for but you. But I called my mom and talked to her for a while and everything. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, we, we did something similar. I, wearing a mask, I went to my grandfather's. I got him something. I just said Merry Christmas to my brothers mm. and him. Went to my mom's, dropped some stuff off, said Merry Christmas. And then we were, I made dinner. I yeah. Steve and me and Allison haven't left the house since. Yeah. Um, and uh, like we very low key this year as well. Uh, we, we just, we felt like donating is probably the best bet. Um, so gift giving wasn't a, a big deal this year. Yeah. And yeah. I think that the spirit of Christmas was a little bit more prom. It was less gift giving and more just enjoying yeah feathers company total exactly yeah yeah um do you watch or do or play anything worthwhile mark i started watching uh titans on hbo max because i had heard that batman the animated series was going to be on hbo max yeah so i got excited for that i went looking for that because i was like oh i'm on vacation i'm gonna start watching that but it's not on there yet or i couldn't find it so uh, I started watching Titans. It's it's okay. Now That's is that only live, a couple episodes in? Is yeah, that live, live action. action. Didn't that yeah. come out on the DC app like years yeah, ago? Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah. So it never looked that good. It was just kind of yeah, like I'm a couple episodes in. It's kind of cheesy, right? No, it's just kind of just uh, I don't know. The actor that plays Robin's just kind of bland and uninteresting. I I and am don't care anything about him. But. I am 
I am going to try to give uh, Doom Patrol a try. Uh, Doom Patrol but- was good. Doom Patrol is just the episode I just watched was Doom Patrol, the fourth episode, and you meet Beast Boy. So, yeah, and there's two seasons but- of that, right? Yes, yeah, two seasons of Titans as well. So I'm not going to watch Titans. I have, but Doom Patrol. Yeah, no. you, you said it was good, and then I've heard Doom Patrol was really good. Yeah, other people say it was good too. So yeah, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Um, anything else? That's what it just uh, like this year football happened to be on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So oh my god! Yeah, they spread it out. So there's a lot of football in our in our house. Wow. Jeez. Claire likes the football. I enjoy the football. So hey, that's great. I'm glad you guys can we sat and watch football all weekend. It was nice. We didn't have to do much else. Nice. That's a good weekend. Yeah, it was. Um, I got. How about yourself? Check your notes. What'd you do I, this weekend? I got my notes. Three things I uh, I highly recommend if okay. uh, on New Year's Eve or watch this with Claire, and I recommend to anybody watch on Netflix Death to 2020 we watched it last night it's an hour 15 minutes Mm -hmm. um it's from the creators of uh black mirror and they have celebrities playing uh like it's like a documentary style of Mm. 2020 but it's very funny um and uh they have it's a satirical look of the year basically okay Uh, i i we did not expect what we expected it's very funny it's cathartic because you watch it and you get yeah. to laugh at 2020 even though it was heartbreaking year and a lot happened it you can at least laugh at it you know because they're 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 making joke uh making jokes about some of the stuff that happened uh samuel jackson's in it um the girl who played the mom and how i met your mother i don't know the actress's name she's in it okay um uh, oh, Hugh Grant is in it. Uh, he looks super old. I know he he's is makeup, old, yeah, but he looks super old. Uh, he's anyway, super old and doing. He looked old. Yeah, totally watch this on New Year's Eve. But like I said, the death to 2020 on Netflix really good, and it's only okay. an hour. It's only an hour, right. and you'll laugh. Okay. You'll cry and you'll laugh some more. Okay. Uh, so I watched two movies. We watched two movies over uh, on Christmas. Eve, we watched Tenet. Wow. Mm. Um, it's a movie I gotta watch again. I bought it. Um, I really enjoyed it, but my head exploded because it's, I did not expect any, I didn't know what I was going to get when I watched this film. And it, because we're Doctor Who fans and we're kind yeah. of used to time travel stuff, yeah, we call it timey wimey. Yes. Timey wimey is used when you don't, you can't explain something. You say, well, it's timey wimey, right? Yeah. That, that's the whole Doctor Who thing. Well, your brain could probably process this a little bit better because Tenet is about an algorithm <sighs> mm. called Tenet. There's people in the future and people in our time, and they're literally going, one set is going this way, you're going mm. this way. Now I thought about Doctor Who, right? Doctor Who and um, uh, um, uh, bu- 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 not the master, but uh, his his wife, Doctor Who's wife. How she's going backwards and he's going yes. forward. Yeah, that's the concept. Okay. And like great action pieces, but your brain explodes at the end because you're like, I'm trying to figure this out while so mm. much is happening um but i recommend it's a, it's a good watch i wish i saw it on the big screen because there's yeah. some great set pieces it's it's interesting it's not a movie for everybody because mm-hmm. you do have to do some thinking and i know some people want to turn off their brain and that's okay yeah, yeah. um but i liked it and i gotta watch it again but if you like doctor who in time this if you like time travel whew, this, this is the movie great. for you. It, I really enjoyed it. So then okay. on the opposite, opposite spectrum, that movie was like, my brain hurts. I need to, I need to like think of, I need to watch like thought pieces about this on YouTube. Now the following day at Christmas, we watched mm. uh, wonder woman 84, which uh, did 16.7 million 
and I guess that's probably one of the best a movie has done in pandemic. Yeah, I would assume um, so. Yeah. And now they HBO uh, Warner Brothers said there's going to be a third one. Uh, Jenkins is going to come back for the last Wonder okay. Woman film. Um, without spoiling it, because you haven't seen it, Mark. It was my. I, mean, I know like parts of it. I mean, like Cheetah's in it, and Chris uh, plays Cheetah, and right. Pascal, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it. Plays Mandalorian, me. plays uh, Maxwell. He was fantastic. Lord. He okay. So the movie, no spoilers. It's mindless fun. Yeah. But. Uh, 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 we enjoyed it for what it was. I've heard good things. I've heard bad things. I'm middle of the road. I okay. enjoyed it, but it doesn't move the needle in superhero movies at all. It, well, I don't think, how much farther can you move it? I mean, well, you know, when you watch a Spider-Man film, the new ones, they yeah. I think they get better. Spider-Man 2 was better than yeah. the first one almost. This one was kind of like a weird step backwards in time for superhero movies. It kind of took some tro- old tropes we haven't seen in a while. Yeah. Um, it was the 80s. I understand that, but the trope of a certain character is a trope we've seen a million times, and we're kind of over that trope. And it was interesting that brought that trope back. And yeah. I'm not going to say who Kristen Wiig's character is that trope. Okay. I get you. I, yeah. Um, I kind of understand. I kind of see just by the trailer and her look in the movie at the beginning and at the end about like what the shtick is like she's the jilted friend who gets mad at diana and and i've heard it's more of a diana movie than a wonder woman movie yes uh wonder woman shows up in the very beginning and then almost 70 minutes go by it's a two it's a two hour and 30 minute movie which i thought was a little too long that's no good Um, 70 minutes go by. Who's called Wonder Woman for a reason? We want to see Wonder Woman. They don't want to see we, Diana. But when you do, when you do, it's good. Yeah, um, but if it's only it, like 20 minutes of the movie, what's the point? Listen, like I said, I enjoyed it for what it was. It doesn't move. It didn't move me either way. I didn't like... I mean, the I fact that Rocky didn't like it, I mean, that usually is a bad sign. He doesn't like every, anything, though. So well, he's I, him and John. They just here. in a world of anger together. My review is... We enjoyed it for what it was. It's mindless fun. It's free. You didn't yeah. have to pay for it. Well, you, you did. Know, you... It's not like it was an extra. Paid your ten bucks a month or whatever for HBO Max. So listen, it wasn't a Disney thought style thirty dollars to watch this. Yeah. You had which they gave up on because they released their movie Soul on Christmas Day, which yeah, I've cause... heard very very good things about. I gotta watch that next. I gotta watch. Yeah. That next. Um. But anyway, those are the three things I high I you know what I recommend all three movies. Tenet, if you your mind wants to explode, Death of 2020 to have a good time, a cathartic mm. laugh about 2020, and it's very well done. And Wonder Woman 84, just for you just want to turn your brain off and not think about anything. Yeah, and just have a good time. Honestly, yeah. it, it, I mean, we me and Allison, we liked the characters. It was yeah. so we enjoyed it. We watched it together as a couple. So, um. And we didn't have to leave the fucking house. And the vacation yawns. I'm sorry. I could tell. What you? What oh time did you go to bed last night? I went to bed relatively late last night. But we're on vacation. Yeah. Um. Anyway. But, but but Claire broke the garage this morning, so I had to wake up early and fix the garage. So the whole garage broke. No, we have like the garage door, the thing that pulls the garage door up. Yeah. It's just got screws that hold it in. There's not like nuts behind it that hold the screws in. So That's after poorly, yeah, which I just realized like today for the second time, I was going to fix it and then forgot about it and remembered it today when I heard the garage door fall. So <laughs> tell me more, Mark. About yes. these garage so, doors. so I had to just put the screws back in and now it works fine. So I just got to get some, some nuts or bolts on the back of that to hold it together. Gotta always have those nuts, baby. That's right. Gotta get the nuts. Okay. Um, get those yam bags. Yam bags. So we're gonna go through our our. Which Claire e- never heard yam bags before. I randomly said it about something during the holiday. I don't know what a yam bag is either, Mark. You don't know what a yam bag is? It's your nut Please. sack. I've never heard that. You ever got hit? Never said don't get hit in the yam bag. Mark, you literally, it's the first time I've ever heard you wow. say yam bag. In my entire life knowing you, you've never said yam bag before. Wow. 
I think we should call this episode the Yam Bag Special. The Yam Bag end of year special. The Yam Bag. Happy Hall- Yam Bags. New Year's Eve. The end of the uh, the year. The it's like year. an older term. It's not like something I use all the time. But so sometimes the stuff just comes out. You know, when you're thinking, you don't think you, words just come out. I'll give you a funny story about the, to kind of go with your Yam Bags. Yeah. When we had Pounce. <laughs> Can bless- I go with your Yam Bags? Here's a good story for you. Bless my cat's heart. Um, yes. You know, it passed away. But anyway, pounce would always lay on my stomach or my yeah. crotchal region, my yes. hand bag area. Yes. Now, he was notorious for when he wanted to get up, it was he put all his force oh. onto the surface and Eesh. pounce. That's why we named him Pounce. He yes, off. he would pop off. So he always would jump or push off on my ambags mm. so one night i was so now you can't so, stop saying it now it's a fun word i'm just gonna say ambags now yeah it's a fun I word was, i was so i was falling asleep he yeah. was laying on me and out of nowhere he Something put all him. his pressure right on my ambags mm. and i yelled out i yelled out and Alice said, to this day we laugh about it i yelled out i said um Get off my Kimmy Gibblers. Or my Kimmy, Kimmy Gibblers, Gibblers are not a playground. My Kimmy Gibblers? I don't know why he just yelled at Kimmy Gibbler. I said, my, my Kimmy, Kimmy Gibblers, Gibblers are not a playground. <laughs> I don't know why. It is weird. You like randomly say words. And I got it. I, like she asked me where I ever came up with like where I heard that before. I got to say it was probably my grandfather. Who grew up in old. New York. Yeah. In the like 20s and 30s. I bet you somewhere online someone said, hey, watch those kick him in the yam bag and that's where it came from so it sounds like a word that was yeah an so it's probably generation. something my grandfather said a bunch like randomly a couple times and it just kind of stuck in my head and somehow it came up over the vacation we we're talking about something and i use the word yam bag and claire's like happens a lot i say things and claire's never heard them before like sayings and yeah well things well, my grandfather used to say and she's like where do you come up with these things i'm like i don't know Someone in my life, someone or somewhere in my life, someone said it to me and it's stuck in my head and now I just use it. But pretty much. All right, Mark, let's move on from the All right. moving on from the end bags. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I can go first. Are we just going to do top? We're just going to like do back our top forth. five or just go back and oh, forth? back and forth, back and forth. Let's... All right. Okay. Me, that now, these are in no particular order. I was going to throw that out there. Mine are not no particular order. Yeah. So my first one is it's a, uh, it's a book actually. Uh, kind of deals with all the stuff that's been going on uh, this year. Uh, my company actually sent every employee out this book uh, to read, and I'm about uh, uh, three quarters of the way through it. It's uh, Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. Yeah, very good. It's a great book. Great book so far. I'm enjoying it thoroughly. I'm not the, the quickest of readers, which is why I'm only three quarters of the way through it, and I've probably had it for about eight, nine months now. Welcome to the club, Mark. Welcome yeah. <laughs> Whereas my wife will read a book in a day and I'll be like, oh. Do you get the, I, if I read a book at a certain part of the day. I fall asleep. I fall asleep. Yeah. I, I can't control it. Nope. That's, the, it's everything now. Yeah. I just fucking doze off like an old man. TV shows, anything. Pass out. Especially on Sundays. If Claire leaves the room for a while to go cook and leaves me alone to watch football or something, I'm out. Pass right out. Yeah. One old man. Old man, Warlock. Old man, look ah, at your life. You fall asleep reading books now. <laughs> Pretty much. But no, it's a great book. Uh, Trevor Noah was actually in our all employee meeting. Our uh, CEO interviewed him. I think I talked about this before on the podcast. Uh, it was very interesting to hear his take on things that were going on at the time. Yeah. And I always enjoyed him as in, in the Daily Show. So. Yeah, so it's a great book. I suggest if you haven't had a chance to read it yet, Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. It's fantastic. I'll definitely check it out. I, I we're big fans of the Daily Show in our house. We watch. Yeah, Daily it's pretty much his autobiography. He wrote himself, so it's it's really good. Cool. Definitely check it out. Yeah. Uh, so Mark, I got I got a. I know you're not a podcast person. You don't listen. I'm not. To this is the only podcast I listen to, and I don't even listen to it. So. I hope to change that today. And people listening out there, this is one of my favorite new podcasts of 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, It it was announced in February and it started back in March of this year. And it is 
fake doctors, real friends with Zach and Donald. And I've heard about this. The Scrub I've, Rewatch podcast. I did listen to the first episode, and that was about as far as I got. I it I have a lot of podcasts I listen to, and especially in the summertime, I take a half hour walk around the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Colder weather, I try to. I don't always do it. You get a treadmill well, like Hutzel. I like being outside though. Um, <laughs> you have a, a video monitor and just play outside on it, and yeah, it's, it's great. The it's not the same. Anyway. I a fan could blow I wind listen, on you. I, I listen to a lot of shows, but when this show would come up in my feed, yes. I would always look forward to it. Now, and right now, there's so many inside jokes. It's like it, it's you got to you got to start listening from the beginning. Mm. Um, but the cool thing is about the show, they have literally have had almost everyone from the cast on, which has been amazing. Yeah, they have a segment called the Bill Lord ask bill lawrence so they don't know something about the show they Mm -hmm. go they go bill we gotta ask you a question and then they'll send that question out to him and he'll respond Mm -hmm. um the theme song which is amazing which zach uh braff and donald Faison both sing Mm -hmm. and there's a running joke when they count it in they go um five six seven eight and then the song will play so when bill lawrence as a joke he doesn't know the answer he'll just be like you know, I don't really know five, six, seven, eight, and they'll they'll play a theme song, and Zach Rapp gets pissed. He's like, "No, stop!" <laughs> um, so that's becoming a running thing. Yeah. Um, and another great thing, as the show has progressed, in the beginning, uh, Donald Faison has really talked. Um, they've gone on to t- different topics like Star Wars. He talks about Star Wars a lot. Yeah. And I didn't know this, but Donald Faison. Uh, is a stop motion his hobby is doing stop motion so in his basement he does stop motion Star Wars stuff and um, yeah it's pretty cool like I didn't know that and he posts them online so it's like <laughs> robot chicken but he does yes, it himself. Yeah. he does it himself which is really cool but honestly it's one of my favorites I it puts me in a good mood it's not a they they'll talk about if the news is like Black Lives Matter happened. They talked about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. COVID, obviously. But I mean, other than that, it, it's just so cool because that show, um, you got me into that show and I was like in love with that show. Yeah, and, it's a good uh, show. It is. It's still one of my top favorites TV shows of all time. And I don't know. It's just so cool to hear the background of stuff that happened and actually hearing the cast on there. And they're all excited to be back. And I hope, I hope they do the entire run. I, it sounds like they are. Um, even though Zach Braff's like, should we do season nine? And Don Faison's like, we have to. We have to do season nine. Because mm. season nine was the, the last. The worst. Yeah. It was the worst. The it, and, yeah. and they know that. I mean, they're well aware. It ABC wasn't. season. Well, no. It was on ABC for like a long time. Or was that, it NBC that the last season was on? No, it got the last two seasons it was on abc because nbc canceled it oh that's right that's what it was it was on nbc then it moved to abc for the last two yeah it was an abc product production anyway. yes yeah ABC but they were it. yeah it was when nbc decided to stop doing outside a lot of the outside productions i don't know. it just got canceled nbc yeah. and abc saved it from being canceled but then they became uh, teachers and it was all terrible yeah that last season but anyway, yeah. highly recommend Fake Doctors, Real Friends. Yeah. Because it just. It was a Franco was on that. Yes. The other yes. Franco. Uh, yeah. John Franco. Yeah. No, he was a baseball player. His brother, uh, Franco's brother, was on. James Franco's brother. James Franco, yes. and it's probably like, that's like one of his first things. Yeah. You know, he got his career kind of out of that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, there you go. That's my first thing of the year. That nice. I really- well, my second thing of the year. That I was into was just recently it came out. Uh, it was actually on the HBO. It's now on the HBO Max. It's uh, the Bee Gees documentary, How to Mend a Broken Heart. My mom was a huge Bee Gees fan growing up. So yeah. I had heard Bee Gees my whole life. I've been hearing the Bee Gees. So I was like, I'm going to check this thing out. I happened to watch it one night. It was on the HBO Max. And I was like, ah, let me see how this is. And honestly, it was amazing. It was very heart-wrenching because it's uh barry gibb basically telling the story of the Bee Gees, and it's like a love letter to his brothers basically like 
like without my brothers, I wouldn't be who I am. Like this is right. how everything happened and everything. Yeah. And then coming to find out all of the songs they wrote after the Bee Gees popularity kind of waned is a more amazing because it's like they were writing songs until the 80s and 90s. Like every major song we know in that time frame basically was a Bee Gees song. Like the Bee Gees wrote it and other people sang it. Like Barbara Streisand, Whitney Houston, Dionne Warwick, like every big song that came out was basically a Bee Gees song. Very good, but it was, baby. Yeah, it was just great. And then like they talk about all the different like things that happened with them and their younger brother Andy. And then at the very end of that, like the documentary, like the thing that like like got me the most was like Barry Gibb was like they asked him like, you know, would you give up all this? Like he'd like, I'd give up like what would you do to get your brothers back? He goes, I would give up everything. I'd rather be poor than not have my brothers here with me. Yeah, it's sad that all his brothers yeah. died, right? Yeah. He's the only one alive. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Don't ruin it. I do want to watch it. Don't it's very it. good. I, if you're any kind of music fan, it's it's great. Because you like I didn't know that they like started as an actual band band back in the 70s. And there were songs I didn't even know were their songs that like people covered and were took and kind of got the popularity of the song, kind of. But it was a Bee Gees song originally. Yeah. And there's like a whole bunch of stuff like that. There's a they've been like writing songs for other people for years, and just great to hear like the story of like how they were basically the Beatles after the Beatles, kind of like they're like right next to the Beatles in popularity at that time. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, and all the craziness that happened because of all that. But make a great like actual movie movie, and like they interview a lot of artists from today, and like they now interview Nick Jonas from the Jonas Brothers. And he like is like a nice correlation person because he tells like the story of like having to be in a band with his brothers and how that goes and how the BGs were kind of like they're like the guiding light kind of and how to do it without like hating each other basically. So right, right, right. I'll step, but it, it's I a really good documentary. I suggest anyone watch it. So I heard good things. So I'll definitely yeah, it's great. It's that. fantastic yeah cool all right marcus so man my top five was tough tough to pick out uh, uh i'm gonna go to video games here uh one of okay. my i had a lot of, i had like a I cyberpunk had a 2077 yeah right i wish i wish <laughs> i wish it came out good i'm still waiting for that patch to be playable <laughs> I, I am enjoying the fact that they still are promoting it like it's like a good game and it are, is interested in buying it it is a good game there's a good the pc version got high reviews it's the console version that is buggy it's i know good. but they're not promoting it for the pc they're promoting it for xbox i know i know well and the fact that they, poor keanu reeves is still being sent out like his commercials are still being aired with him uh join the cyberpunk and get into the charm city or whatever it's called people who have played it all love it but they say mm. for all the console will freeze and it's buggy. I'm just going to wait for the next gen update next year and I'll yeah. play it then. But anyway, I don't want to talk about that. My if favorite, the company makes it that far. Yeah, my favorite uh, video game uh, this year, okay. no doubt, it came out in June 19th. I played it twice in a row, is The Last of Us Part Two. Um, it, it, it is uh, Naughty Dog, freaking home run, home run for me. Uh, the detail, mm. the storytelling, it was what playing probably like a, the, one of my favorite miniseries of the yeah. year. Um, it, it, it was engaging. I didn't know where were, they were going to go with the story. Uh, how the story ends in the first game has a ripple effect in the world. And that's what two is about. And it threw a twist in the middle where I am now playing the person who did something in the beginning of the game. I'm not spoiling it. I spoilers are already out there, but I don't care. Yeah, I'm and pretty sure when it's happened since June. I'm pretty sure most people. That's true. But I played it. I played it at this point. Playing that character that you saw do something really horrible to one of your favorite characters was mm. like what? And then you're getting two sides of the story. Um, but man, it blew me away. It brought me to tears. I like it was 
an incredible game. I, the yeah. story time was unbelievable. It really pushed, in my opinion, pushed the boundary of storytelling when it co- comes to video games. Um, and there was a few other games that did that as well, but that this this game stood out the most, in my opinion. Now, just for people out there, if you, would you suggest they play Last of Us One before they play Last of Us Two? Yes. Like, do you have to? Is you it connected? Have. Yes. Okay. If you don't play the, the first one, that's where you fall in love with these characters and uh, one of the decisions is ripple effects of what happens in two so if you don't have that context you might not feel Mm. as you might not feel as close or uh, connected as you should be i gotcha uh it's a part two i mean it's in the name part two i got you i don't know if there was some some games it's not the same you know like assassin's creed 2 or assassin's creed you don't have to play the other assassin's creed to play Valhalla and not like that's true enjoy it so that's why I just want to know if there was a connection there so and um there is going to be an HBO series which the creators of Chernobyl and Neil Druckmann who actually wrote The Last of Us 1 and 2 he, he's writing he'll be part he'll be writing with the guy from Chernobyl for The Last of Us series on HBO I have full I have full faith that they'll create a great show hmm. um be a tough watch though i, I would assume because it seemed like it was a tough game emotional wise yes it's it definitely is it's yeah. definitely um um uh, i mean not even dog knows how to bring it the uncharted series is absolutely hmm. fantastic and uh the last of us is just a darker very dark uh video game hmm. um but yep that was one of my my favorite video games of the year all right well, I'm starting over to TV shows, the rest of the list here. Uh, my third thing, The Boys, season two. Ooh, yeah. I tell you that I've never been so engrossed in a story that I am with The Boys. If for like a comic book TV show. Right. The, the, the twists and turns of that series this year was crazy. I'm not gonna like spoil too much because I know some people haven't seen it yet. Yeah, well, it's a must watch. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. If you're gonna get into it, start from season one. Season two picks up right where season one left off, so you can't really like jump in without knowing what's going on, kind of. So, but no, it's just crazy, like the ending and all the stuff that happens in the ser- in the season. And it's very. 2020 i mean yes. they were they they actually wrap in what's happening in real life into this a little bit um yeah. which is nice because the, the the graphic novel the graphic novels um mm. they they use elements but obviously the show updates it for modern times because yeah. um what's happening currently so i i think they did a great job of really making it something different uh, yeah like i never the comic books or the the compendiums like you have so i don't have the connect like the comparison stuff yet i'd like to start doing that that's probably might be the next uh thing i purchase off the old amazon you should yeah. but uh yeah so but no season two was just crazy i don't want to get too deep into it i know season three they're already starting to work on so very exciting Oof. yeah the boys yeah, it's so good. Even your mom will think it's enjoyable. Oh God, I wouldn't want to know if my my, I, my mom yeah. watches the boys. She loves it. That's weird. I know. I never thought I would ever say that, but that's it's weird. True. She's into uh, it. Hey, that's great. It is a great show. Yeah, my grandfather watches it, but he watches. Yeah, it. There you go. He watches yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, really, that's not really a ringing endorsement because he literally watches anything. He literally watches and, it all. and everything. Yeah. Yes, pretty much. Um, for me, uh, this was an HBO documentary that came out in, um, I want to say in the summertime. I, I mm. watched it this year. I think it may have come out in the beginning of the year. Um, and uh, I'll Be Gone in the Dark, which still, uh, right, yes, yeah. still sits with me to this day. I think about it constantly. Yeah. Um, it's, Claire loved it. She can't stop talking about it. Yeah, uh, Michelle uh, McNorma, right? Is that her last McNamara. name? McNamara. McNamara. Yeah. Uh, Patton Oswalt's wife, 
I couldn't read my own writing. Oh, jeez. It's all scribbling. You were like chicken scratch and hopes and dreams. Um. Anyway, it's she wrote a book <laughs> about the Golden State Killer. She was yes. obsessed with finding out who this person was, and she ends up passing away, uh, before the book comes out, and uh, a couple other people yeah finished the book for her, but that all her research and work ends up leading to finding the killer. Um, yeah. Like unbelievable. Um, but it was like the first time that the like the ancestry like was like used to back trace to a person kind of like they use like yes. yeah. the online ancestry the websites to like connect who this person was to other people and family tree yeah yeah exactly. it was crazy um and i caught bits and pieces of the end of it and like it introduced me to the whole like like uh amateur investigator group that's out there and the people that are into this stuff and oh yeah the fact that there's like murder conventions i know isn't that crazy they talk which yeah. i was like what there's a convention for everything there's there is now there is yeah. there's murder like murder. true crime conventions i didn't yeah didn't expect to see that no but make total sense yeah. and um and it's all women surprisingly enough who would have thought mostly mostly women. yeah <laughs> Um, but hey, it's a bunch of housewives watching forensic files. A b- bunch of guys at the Star Wars one. So yeah, you know, exactly. You um, ever wonder where all the women are at the comic book conventions? They're over at the true crime convention. Right. Uh, but no, I want to say real quickly though. Um, I I I think why it sits this this documentary sits with me is because the victims hearing actually concentrating more on the victims. Yeah. And hearing their painful um, stories, and when I say painful, I mean like it was painful. Oh, to look- when that got me the most was the couple that they're yeah. still together. I know, the husband and wife. I know. Like I caught bits and pieces of as Claire was watching it, I, like drifting in another room, like from upstairs to downstairs, kind of. And I caught like their story with like how he like was forced to basically listen to everything that happened to his wife and everything, and it was like. Yeah, Ugh. and you could like see him like as she's telling her story, and he's sitting right there. Even all these years later, he's like literally like shaking with like anger and yeah. fear at the same time. Yeah, and they're like they were the last couple. All the other couples had broken yeah. up or got divorced. Yeah, and they stuck it. They stuck it through, which was really good. And you, yeah, yeah. you could see the pain. And but they they spoke their truth about how they felt and they got they oh got yeah no it was, just, it was just it, very well done too it was yeah. very well put together and yeah it's still it, i think yeah. it was one of the most powerful documentaries i've seen all year and like like i just thought it was well made but i yeah. really like the focus on the victims um because sometimes these documentaries come out and they turn the murderer or the the person who's an asshole into the kind of like, like a celebrity thing. kind of thing like yeah the, the ted bundy ones are kind of yeah not really glorifying ted bundy but they kind of at the same time but it's also like you know tiger king right we we all yeah. watched tiger king and it was a train wreck and we all enjoyed it yeah but they were assholes yeah <laughs> they were all assholes. terrible people not They're... one redeeming person in the whole group of them yeah and i still haven't seen tiger king nor will i ever see it oh it's Refused. enjoyable it's not I my refuse. favorite. It's not my favorite, but it's enjoyable. No, no, I just refuse to like acknowledge and let there be any kind of popularity for those people. Fair enough. It's uh, just disgraceful to me. But no, yeah, it was kind of the like going off your thing. I like right underneath the five things I have were like the uh, Heaven's Gate documentary that we watched and the murder on, murder on Middle Beach. Uh, documentary it was like a year good like ex- yeah. exemplary documentaries and i know there's some that i still haven't watched that i want to i know like I'm, i really want to watch city hall which delves into uh, the boston government and how it works and everything and how city hall works which i yeah. heard huge great things about and there's a slew of other ones besides that that they're, they're yeah. like like lined up there's a bunch of like it's a a lot of good documentarians out there. So if you're looking for something to watch, there's documentaries of every type out there. We're in the middle of the Heaven's Gate one right now. Oh, I'll man. get back to you next year when we when I think. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. I mean, not good stuff, but I, yeah. it's a great documentary. They do a good job. 
Totally, totally. Yeah. All right, Marcus, what do you got? All right, my next one, my fourth thing that uh, I totally fell in love with the show. After the fact of it being on the air, like it, the only reason why I heard about the show, I'd heard rumblings about it, but never really was like, oh, I got to watch that show. It was on a channel that no one watches, basically. And uh, you're, you guys watch this show as well. Uh, they won almost every Emmy this year. Shit's Creek. Yes. Yeah. I fell in love with this show. I like wish there was more of it. I like watched six seasons and I'm like, give me more. My favorite, my, my favorite part is it won all the Emmys. Yes. And then I, I tell you, oh, we're going to start watching it. Oh, you're one of those people. And then you yeah. start watching it. And I'm like, I didn't even like, it was like a randomest thing too. It wasn't like I was like going to watch it, but uh, I think it was on Netflix. It popped up on Netflix it's and I'm like, all Netflix. right, it's been on Netflix. let me check this out. Let me give this thing a chance. And I just blew through six seasons. It was fantastic. We are currently in season five, and Ugh. I think season five is. I think five is really good so yeah. far. Uh, four was really good. I think three was probably the weakest. Three um, was the weakest, yeah. Uh, but I feel like they know where they're going. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, uh, um, but 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 um, Patrick. Yes. And um, is it Michael? Right. No. Um, who's the son's name? Why well, can't think of the son's name? I can't remember now. Dan Levy's character, which is Dan, is it? Does he play himself as his own name? No, it's not Dan. You have Alexa. You have Moira. Yes. You have, you have um, Ronnie. Yeah, you have Ronnie. Uh, Shits. I can think of everyone's name, and now I can't think of the son's name. First, I don't think they say his name a lot. They say it all the time. Maybe I'm just not. Mother says it all the time. David. 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 Oh, yeah. David. Anyway, I think uh, Patrick and David, uh, their their romance together. I think it's really refreshing to have a gay couple where it's not the butt of a joke. Yeah. Um, where it is taken seriously, and it's taken seriously just as a normal couple would be. And it is normal. What am I they, saying? They here? they definitely. But it's written. It's written by someone who is gay, which yes. it makes it even better yeah. because it, it's not a bunch of straight people writing for gay characters. Exactly. You actually, have a gay person writing for their character. They and, made it. Yeah. They in this show, he makes it like, like we know we've all we have many gay friends. It's realistic. We've had through our friend our years of friendship, we all know. But it made it like the those those people is the closest to like just the regular every day. They have the same relationship BS that every other person has. Right. Right. There's and no it, tropes to it. There's no yeah. Like it doesn't pander to anything. It doesn't, you know, it's not all over each other like in some things where it's like, oh, the gay people are just there or they yeah. gotta be quirky or they gotta be this or they gotta be that. It's just he's he started out as a terrible person and Patrick makes them better. Yeah, totally. (laughs) That's basically what it boils down to. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I think the show is on par with sweetness with Parks and Rec. Because Parks and Rec is very very homey, kind of. Sweet, uh, sweet. small towny feeling. Yeah. Everyone bands together no matter what. Like, we're in season five, like I said. It's not on my list because I haven't finished it. And I feel like Mm. I have to finish it before I oh yeah that makes sense but it's on mine because i did totally Uh, i totally agree with that's a great pick but yeah it's just great like i said it was um i will say it was a bright spot in a bad year that's all i'll say totally totally definitely helps it helps me get through that 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 tough middle part of the summer like before the summer and the spring beginning of summer there was kind of a, a drudge there for a little bit we yeah. weren't really sure what's going on, where we're heading, and everything. Totally. But no, finding that it was uh, it was fantastic. It was a great show. They did a great job with it. I want after you get done with the series, I suggest watching the documentary. Oh yeah, it's on my list. It's on the Netflix as well about the making of the show. Yeah. And how they kind of roped everyone into it. And just like Eugene Levy is just the greatest. Like he's fantastic. 
He's a Canadian yeah. treasure. He is a Canadian treasure. <laughs> yeah. No, and um, I'm like, I'm totally sold on Dan Levy. Like I like I watched that Happiest Season movie just because Dan Levy was in it. Oh, I thought it was great. Yeah, thought it, was great. it was great. It's a very nice, sweet uh, uh, romantic comedy for Christmas. Yeah. That was our first Christmas movie of the year for us. And we yeah. both really liked it. So Yeah. Totally. Even, even though Kristen Stewart was in it. I think she's awesome. She's a she's a great actress. Yeah. I've never seen I, I really have not seen a bad performance by her. We were in, we both saw Adventureland. She was she was good in that. And the movie was all right, but yeah. what are you gonna do? She didn't help. Uh anyway. Uh Anyways. my next my next thing is a book. I'm going to Okay. Um I read a lot of Twin Peaks related books this year because a no, lot of my you friends... don't say a lot of my friends put out books. You don't say. Yeah. Um, and... You like Twin Peaks? I didn't know that about you. Yeah, I know. Um, you should but... do a podcast about it. Maybe. Maybe I should. <laughs> then maybe you should write a book about the podcast. Maybe you my, do. Maybe my future self already is doing it. Huh. My, my tenant is already... You guys are meeting in the in like conjuncting together. Right. We're meeting in the middle. Yeah. So that podcast is actually happening in different yeah. times. What happens if your future self sees your present self in tenant? Do you like implode? There, there are ramifications. Yeah. You got to watch it. What if you have uh, sex with yourself as you're why, passing each other? No. Why would you? Watch I don't know. <laughs> it's getting weird. Uh, so, uh, what if um, I never watch tenant? You don't have to. Did that affect anything in the. Okay. No, it won't affect anything at all. Good. Because I'm not planning on ever watching that movie. All right, don't watch. I don't care. All right, let Seems me get weird. let me get on to my thing. Yes. Uh, so uh, one of my favorite a books book. that stuck with me is Laura's Ghost. A uh, woman speak about Twin Peaks. Um, it has has some celebrities in there. It has Cheryl Lee, Jennifer Lynch, Grace Rubinsky. Um, But what where it really shines is a very moving book about women's accounts mm. of sexual abuse, and that's uh. really what the story of Laura Palmer is all about. And this book delves into that topic and it's heavy at times, but it's very emotional. The um, book itself or the story? The book is pretty thick. So okay. it's kind of heavy Second. too. Just want to make sure. Um, yeah. I, I'm like, Oh, can I grab it? I can't. Did you bring a prop with you? No. Um, yeah. But it's a very emotional, heavy book. Uh, it has stuck with me just like I'll be gone in the dark. Uh, I almost feel like, that documentary and that book kind of go hand to hand, maybe because I saw them very close to each other, but they're right dealing with, they're dealing with the same kind of topics. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like highly recommend it. It's a very great book. You can get a blue rose mm. for only twenty four ninety nine. Oh, wow. But now if it, I were to buy that book and another book, would I get a, a shipping discount? Uh, there is a two pack that you can buy both books. Huh? But I'm not here to talk about that other book. But no, you, not at all. No, no. no. I talk but about. If you book. are buying that book, you might as well pick up the book Twin Peaks Unwrapped, as you, well. Yes. As a as a companion to the other book. You could. And you could read about that story, and then you can read all the interviews with the people that were in that book, in the other book. Right. Totally. And you, you yeah. don't count if you're buying both together. There you go ahead. Wow. Yeah. And if you're a blowout. Yeah. And if you're a blowout, baby. Wow. But anyway, that, was one, that was one of my favorite books of the year. I read yeah. mostly all Twin Peaks books, other than the boys' graphic novel. Yeah. Uh, but I was reading other people's books because we had them on the show. And I was yeah. just like, I got to read these. But I really enjoyed that book a yeah. lot. Uh, anyway, that was my number four. Oh, nice. All right. My final thing of the year, which. I'd be surprised if we don't have the same final thing, but we'll see what happens. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. My favorite thing of the whole year, Mandalorian season two. I knew you were going to say that. I didn't pick it. I didn't pick it on purpose. Does it even make your top five? Like or I you said, just not pick it because I was going to pick it? Right. Right. Okay. So you have something else to talk about. That's why. Yeah. I get, understand. Yeah. Yeah. But no, Mandalorian season two took season one and just took it into hyperspace totally. or jump space as Boba Fett would call it. 
Uh, it was fantastic. We got to see Boba Fett fight. We got to see Slave One. We got to see uh, Ahsoka. We got to see the return of Fennec. There was the return of Mayfield. The stories were all great. There wasn't one episode that was kind of boring, like the first season. We had like a couple episodes that were kind of eh. This season, every one of them, bam, 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 kept building, kept building to a crescendo that was the big finale episode, which we talked about last week. If you haven't seen it, where have you been? You're living under a rock. It was fantastic. It paid off everything we could ever ask for. Opened up new avenues, new doors to season three. And we, I have to wait a year, a full year, till season three. But I'm not sad and angry about it because I can't wait for it. It's going to be fantastic. And Mark, we have an greatest. update. We have an update. Last week, after yes. we recorded, it was said that the Book of Boba Fett's coming out first. Yes, in Mandalorian. on Christmas Day. On, okay. They're going to be a full season of Book of Boba Fett. And then right after that, in 2022, as soon as Boba Fett ends, Mandalorian season three will begin. Yeah, to me, that makes the most sense. You can't, you should. And right after to- that happens, I'm assuming by then Ahsoka will be done. Yeah, we come out. It's going to be yeah. nuts. This year is the year 2021, the year of Marvel, 2022, the year of Star Wars. Honestly, the 2021 is the year Brian didn't cancel Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still have it. I, there you go. That's Hutzel, all point. Hutzel, who I share my Disney Plus with, oh, uh, that's nice he, of you. he watched all of Mandalorian on Christmas Day. Mm. He texted me, holy shit. <laughs> that was fucking awesome. And it I was go, amazing. I he watched it was whole- so good. Was I so don't good. usually go online and do these and watch like the reaction videos, but... I was like, I just want to see what other people are like saying about this. And there's like one guy that I watched that like does reviews on things. And I like checked his out and he was like, just pretty much just video videoed himself watching the episode and just his reaction to it. And then like, I was like, I need more of this. I need to see other people's reactions. to Kevin Smith cried. Yeah. No, I, I got emotional. I got choked up. But a lot of people cried. A lot of, a lot of men cried. Crying baby before yeah. Christmas because of that return. Women are outside solving crimes and we're crying over baby Yoda. Hey, whatever. What are you gonna do? Someone's uh, gotta do it. Someone's gotta cry over baby Yoda. That's right. It'll be us man childs. That's right. Man babies. Um, so Mark, you're right. I, I you know, I, I made a list and I kind of checked off checked it twice. I, I made a, a long list and I said, okay, this is worthy. This is not because I have I can only pick five. Yeah. I, of course I have more, but yeah, I can only pick five. And I was trying to pick uh, things from different categories to make it interesting. Mm. And so when I got to my fifth one, I wrote down, I wrote down uh, the new season of Fargo. I wrote Mandalorian. Mm. I wrote the boys and I yeah. wrote uncut gems. Those were the Ooh, man. I totally forgot about uncut gems. Those were my four, and then I have a fifth one, which I will reveal to you in a second. But those are okay. my four favorite things that I just didn't have room. I didn't know what yeah. to pick, right? And I'm like, oh my god! And then this one movie that I had, I still think about, and I really want to rewatch it. And I think it was unbelievable. Uh, what? unbelievably well done and mm-hmm. enjoyable and it's fucking nuts and it really got me and us on the, the edge of our seats like oh my god this movie's like my heart's popping mm-hmm. out of my chest here bill and um, ted's adventure no I oh. wish. um it's a film that actually came out in 2019 but i saw it in 2020 for the oscars i okay. saw it in january or february right before the oscars because we watch oscar yeah, films. Yeah. um it is parasite I, uh-huh. it, it won for uh, best movie in the Oscars. Um, the, the director, he's the same guy. He directed Snowpiercer, uh, the Snowpiercer movie, which Great I still got to see. Fantastic movie. Yeah. Um, One of my that, favorites. That's based off a graphic novel. Yes. Um, I still haven't watched the TV show yet. I got to get into the TV show. I know. I heard good things. Yeah. Jennifer Connelly's in it. So, I mean, how can it be bad? I know. 
but Parasite is the original movie he wrote and directed. Mm. And um, it, it, it's a, a, um, a South Korean film. And yes. it is, I, like I said, it's, I, once a week, it will pop in my head. I'm like, oh my God, that movie was just so amazing. And it's, it, it's a two hour film, but when you hit the first hour, it just goes, mm. it's like you're going up a roller coaster and you hit that hour mark and then yeah. you are dropping for that final hour and you're just like things are just going nuts and you're just yeah. like wow and it kind of reminiscent of uncut gems how he unravels throughout that film and the last half hour 40 minutes of mm. uncut gems or the last 20 minutes is just like bananas yeah and, um so parasite is probably one of my favorite films of the year um and you know, Uncut Gems was fantastic too, but I think yeah. I like Parasite a little bit more. But um, yeah, it was hard to pick. It really was hard to pick. So yeah, no, it was like I knew Mandalorian was my number one, and then it was filling in the other stuff was tough. But nah, it was it was a. I mean, it was a tough year everywhere else, but it was a great year entertainment wise. There's a lot of good entertainment out there to get us totally. through it all. So yeah, I I mean, I. Like, you know, I tried to pick something from each category here, which I kind mm. of, I did. Um, but yeah, it was a great year for entertainment, honestly, um, with streaming services and yeah. movies coming out at home. Um, uh, you know, you got to be stuck inside, man. I guess that was the year to be stuck inside yeah. um, because there was just so much great content. Can you imagine if this was the 90s or the 80s? Oh, we, yeah. would we would just have, like, Blockbuster would be the only source of entertainment oh, god they would have to start delivering because people wouldn't want to couldn't go to blockbuster yeah. i mean um we are very lucky to be alive in such a time where where i don't know how the people in the spanish flu got them. through that's all i gotta say <laughs> very bored i guess yeah, well they weren't bored ball. they just didn't want to die so i think yeah. they were always on edge like yeah shit yeah. um which we should be too but we're not I mean, a lot of us are, yeah. but some of us aren't. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, Y'all were into red hats. Let's not go there, Mel. Um, but anyway, uh, yes. like I said, uh, watch Death of 2020, Mark, and uh, whew, you'll I will. I'll very cathartic. That. I'll check that out. Watch it with Claire. Uh, I, okay. Watch it with Claire. She'll enjoy it. Uh, okay. It's a movie you got to watch with someone because it's a comedy. You know? Gotcha. You, laughing by yourself is no fun uh but you it's not can, terrible yeah but you guys can laugh at the year at no least. i know what i'm saying but like laughing by yourself isn't awful either i mean i've watched many a funny thing by myself me too me too yeah uh but that was our year in review it was yam sack edition yam bags yam is the yam bag yam bag i'll get kicked in the yam bag you won't be able to get up for a while uh but happy new year mark happy new year brian and happy new year to everybody out there. We'll see you all next year. 2021. Wow. What are we looking forward to in 2021, Brian? Anything you're you're looking forward to seeing or reading or watching or uh, playing? For that matter? Uh, I am looking forward to waiting for the next gen update for Cyberpunk so I actually can play that. That's coming on 2021 mm -hmm. for console. I am looking forward to Warner Brothers releasing majority of their movies on uh, on HBO Max, like Dune. Mm -hmm. Very excited to watch Dune and Godzilla versus King Kong. I've been waiting for this film for a long time. Yes. Um, I would say I'm looking forward to a lot of uh, WandaVision. Uh, a lot. Um, that starts up very soon in January. Um. I'm looking forward to an a vaccine uh, that we can we we can get we can get the general public can get and we can start getting to a new normal, it, it, a little bit better normal than we are now, but something a little bit that's more resemblance of an old normal, I guess. Um, and I can't. That's about it. I mean, there's games coming out and movies and stuff, but I mean. You know, it's so hard to tell because everything, because of the way everything goes with the pandemic, everything gets moved all the time. 
So it's yeah. so hard to get excited about anything that's not set in stone. Yeah. So those are my things right now. But those are the things I'm looking forward to. What about you, Mark? Uh, like you said, WandaVision. I'm excited for that. I can't wait to see how that comes out. Uh, Black Widow, hopefully. We'll get to see it soon. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Uh, I'm excited for uh, hockey to return. Beginning of January. That comes back. I'm excited for that. Is that going to happen? Yes, yeah, they're they're playing January thirteenth. They come back. No audience. No no, no crowds. No, no crowds, crowds to start. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to get it back into my actual office in 2021. That'd be nice. Say Not work from home. That'd be a fun oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Uh. I'm excited for, yeah, just to kind of, I'm excited to see you guys, see you and Allison in person. Yeah. Not through a video screen. Uh, we can only hope. Yeah. That, that's, that, that will I'm happen hoping, this year. Yeah. I'm mean, happy for that. But besides that, yeah, just uh, like you said, Godzilla and King Kong. As soon as that was kind of rumored at in King Kong and then was kind of solidified in Godzilla. Uh, King of Monsters. I was I've been excited for that ever since. Hopefully it works out and they pull it off. I think they will. But uh yeah, all that like a lot of stuff you said. Uh well, towards the end of the year, Book of Boba Fett. I'm excited for that a lot. So see how that all goes. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming in 2021 and we're going to cover it all here on Geekonomics. So stay cool. tuned. We'll see you all next year. Everyone have a great, happy, safe New Year's. Don't do anything dumb or stupid. Stay home. Stay home. Yes. Stay don't, home. don't go to parties. Stay or home. Or get the small, like a small little friend. If you have a tight group of people that you're living with, hang out with them. It's just the new year. It's not anything we, you can't, you're not going to miss anything. No. Yeah. So, Watch the ball drop at home. Yeah. Yeah. Watch the yam bag drop at home. The yam bag's dropping at home. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody have a great, happy, safe new year. We'll see you all in the new year. That's it for Geekonomics. For Brian, I'm Mark. Everybody, 